The lever we're going to talk about is called a Class 1 lever. It's very simple to make. Take any straight object, such as a board or metal rod, and lay it on top of something that's pointed. You now have a lever. The lever is going to have an input arm where you apply pressure to it, and an output arm where the input pressure or forces that you apply will be transferred to the item you're trying to move. Figuring out the mechanical advantage that a lever will give you is actually some pretty easy math. You just divide the length of the input arm by the length of the output arm. Let's look at an example. If each of my arms was exactly the same length, let's say 4 feet, my mechanical advantage would be 4 divided by 4, or 1. What the number 1 means is you haven't really gained anything from this. The force put into the lever is the same as the force coming out of it. What it will do, though, is change the direction of the force. So if you push down on this side of the board, the other side of the board will be lifted up and the distances traveled by both the input and the output will be exactly the same. There's an extremely easy way to make this a much more useful tool. The point your lever is laying on is called the fulcrum. Simply move the fulcrum closer to the object you're trying to lift. This will make your input arm longer than your output arm. Now if we go back and do the math for the mechanical advantage, 5 divided by 3 will give you a mechanical advantage of 1.6. What this means in English is, the output force will be your original force, plus slightly more than half as much again. Stated another way, a 10-pound input can lift 16 pounds. In case you're wondering what makes this happen, the input arm is moving considerably further than the output arm. So in reality, a lever neither decreases or increases the amount of total effort necessary to move a load. Instead, what it does is make the work easier by spreading out the effort over a longer distance. To better illustrate this, let's move the fulcrum one more time. Now the input arm is 6 feet, the output arm is 2 feet, resulting in a mechanical advantage of 3. This means a 10 pound push will lift 30 pounds. Now how does knowing this help us? Many of the tools you use on a regular basis are actually class 1 levers. And if you find you need to dig a hole, your digging bar is the ultimate in class 1 levers. When you stick your digging bar into the ground a couple inches, then pull back on it, your mechanical advantage is somewhere around 20. I would say turning a 10-pound pull into 200 pounds of push can save a lot of blisters when you're digging a hole. And let's say you want to build a fence, and you really don't want it falling over the first time the wind blows. This is where knowing a little bit about leverage can come in handy. Every fence post is actually a lever. The fulcrum is where the post enters the ground. The post above the ground is your input arm, while the post below ground level is your output arm. The input force is felt by the fence is the wind, and this can roughly be calculated as follows. First, we have to know the surface area of the fence boards. In this example, our fence is 4 feet wide and 6 feet high. Surface area is length times width. So we have 24 square feet of fence. And there's actually a formula for calculating wind pressure. It's the wind speed squared times 0.00256. And that'll give you the pressure measured in pounds per square foot. So let's say we have a 40 mile per hour wind. This will give you a wind pressure of roughly 4 pounds per square foot. Now, by itself, that doesn't sound like a lot, but that's only one square foot. To measure the total wind force on the fence, multiply by the total area of the fence. So we're looking at slightly under 100 pounds. To find out how much of that force is transferred to each post, divide it by the number of fence posts you have. Finally, we get about 50 pounds of force on each post. Now, 50 pounds doesn't sound like very much, but keep in mind that that 50 pounds is the input force on a class 1 lever. So the forces that are transmitted into the ground from the wind are amplified by 3. So in reality, there's 150 pounds of force trying to knock the fence over. Normally, unless your fence is mounted in something soft like sand, this isn't a problem. But what happens when we increase the wind speed? At 70 miles per hour, the ground force increases to 450 pounds. And if you live in a place like Colorado or Wyoming that normally get 100 mile per hour winds, nearly half a ton at 921 pounds is trying to push that fence over. Now that we know about class 1 levers, we know the real problem is this mechanical advantage of 3. We also now know how to change that mechanical advantage. Change the length of the input and output arms from 2 and 6 feet over to 3 and 5 feet. This will reduce the mechanical advantage to 1.6. This can be accomplished by putting your 8-foot post one additional foot into the ground. Coincidentally, the input forces will also be fewer. 
because now instead of a six foot tall fence, you'll have a five foot tall fence. Let's rerun the math and see what we've gained. The area of our fence has dropped to 20 square feet. The wind load is still 25.6 pounds per square foot, but the smaller fence now only has 512 pounds of force on it. And this correlates to 256 pounds of force transmitted down each post. The 256 pounds will be amplified by 1.6 when it goes into the ground, which only gives us 409 pounds trying to knock that fence over. That's less than half the force of our last example. Well, I'm hoping this video gave you enough basic math to help you design a fence for the wind loads in the area that you live in. If you're an extremely detail-oriented person and wish to complicate this process, oh, and also no calculus, you can try to include other factors that up to now I haven't mentioned. Items such as the vacuum created by the wind on the back side of the fence, the width of the gaps between the boards, and the fact that the higher up on the fence the wind is hitting it, the greater effect the forces have on that fence. Personally, I'm going to stick with the math that I just showed you. And my final parting words of wisdom, while using this class 1 lever to dig your post holes, every inch of depth matters. And the blisters on your hands will heal long before your fence falls over. Thanks for watching.